Back when I was a child, I used to have an old book. I mean, I had all my stuff stolen years ago, but there was an old book I had, which was a book of receipts. And it was receipts from people who'd done various jobs for other people. Or someone might have gone and built a fence for somebody. And they would be given a, re a receipt for that work. And the receipt for that work would be a recipe. And the recipe might be how to go to certain trees and collect certain saps and mix them together to make certain forms of glue. Something you didn't know before, a life skill you didn't have before. The person who knew how to do that, use that glue, or knew how to make the fence or whatever, might be able to go and see someone else. You know, they wanted a fence built or wanted, they wanted something glued together. You could show them how to make the glue so they could glue the things together themselves. And you wouldn't, like even when I'm saying the guy would build the fence and he'd get a recipe in return, or what he would do is he'd go and teach the guy how to build the fence, and in turn the guy would teach him how to make the glue. Then you'd be able to take that recipe, go somewhere else, build a fence, teach a guy how to make some glue. He'd show you how to make a wagon wheel. Things like this, there were life skills that were traded, because back then you could just go and find a piece of land, build a house, do whatever you wanted to do. If you needed something done, you'd go and find somebody who knew how to do that, and you'd get them to teach you how to do it. Even if they had to come to your house and teach you how to do it, they'd come and do it for you, but you'd do it with them, and in return, you teach them, well, this is how I built my house, or this is how I made a wagon wheel, or this is how I made some glue, or this is how I grew a crop, or this is how I did whatever. So we were actually trading in life skills, so really the currency was integrity. And this is completely testified as being a form of currency by the existence of these books of receipts, which you can still probably find. So, you know, this is a form of currency, integrity, and skills, life skills, is a form of currency. We've had all that taken away from us. Now everything's done for us, which is why people find it so difficult to step outside the system. Why they're so terrified of the system breaking down? Because they don't have any of these life skills. They don't have to do anything for themselves. Most people don't even know which direction the wind comes from, which direction the rain comes from, and which direction they should build a, a lean-to shelter in. They wouldn't know how to survive a storm, even, if they're out by themselves in the forest. You know, things that were basic skills that everybody used to know how to do. They wouldn't know how to divine for water or how to find water or how to fish or how to hunt or how to you know, trap or how to whatever, you know. So we've lost so many skills. And that's been the problem with our society. That's been the problem with everything. This is something that I said way back in the beginning of my first film, The Big Picture. You know, what the internet has done, what all this automation has done is it's caused a huge loss of life skills. And that's the big issue. We're being set up through this loss of life skills. It is. The narrative is falling apart. No matter how much they're trying to pretend it isn't, this is why they've got to create this bureau of disinformation. Because anything that, that tells you the truth now is disinformation. I mean, the whole world's gone backwards. It's like clown world. There's an easy way to get through it, folks. All you need is really the basic requirements to be able to figure out what's going on. And yeah, it's not too hard if you've got one of those. Well, things should work out as long as there's more than two cells in there to rub together. It's crazy. No, I'm actually never provide any solutions. Now, people want a form. They want a plan. They want they want someone to hand them a form and say, well, here's a plan. Here's my plan for your salvation. All you've got to do is do what I say and do this A, B, C, D, and you're going to get to point, point, you know, X, where everything's going to be fine. And by even wanting that, you're just asking for someone else to lead you you're afraid to lead yourself and that's what this is an opportunity to do to rediscover yourself and to realize that you need to lead yourself the fact that we're not prepared to lead ourselves is what's caused this problem to begin with now it's an important lesson here for mankind if we choose to actually look at the lesson and learn from the lesson people want solutions they don't realize that they are the solution you've got to change your perspective and you've got to readjust how you look at the world and how you interact with people Stop buying into all the divisions. Stop buying into all the animosity. Stop thinking everybody is a shill and all this sort of stuff. Get back in touch with what it means to be you. This is something so many people have forgotten, you know, how to actually be human. What it's like to live without the technology. We never had this technology. 
20 years ago we didn't have any of this shit so you know why are we so dependent on it now you know 20 years ago we didn't have any of it but you know offering people solutions and and you know what is the solution to all this and as i keep saying the solution is for you to rediscover yourself that's really how to get through it because this has to play out and so what you've got to do like i said is do the shadow work Find these things about yourself that you need to heal. Find out what your addictions are. Find out what it is that keeps you locked into this system and, and even makes you sad that the system is about to implode. Because I'm not sad about it at all. I, I think it's great that the system is falling apart. We don't need the system. I mean, sure, a lot of people are suffering. That's bad, but that's their own fault because they never learned. Never learned along the way. They never learned self-responsibility. They never learned what it means to be human. They always wanted someone else to come along and fix things for them. But true freedom is based in self-responsibility, folks. That's what it is. You've got to be responsible for yourself, responsible for your own actions, responsible for looking out for your own life, looking after your own life, responsible for everything that happens in that life. If you're not prepared to do that, you'll never be free. Because that's what freedom is. A lot of people don't get that. I saw a really interesting concept the other day presented. I'm not saying it's true, but it's interesting. The whole concept that the world ended in 2012, but we all died simultaneously in 2012, that we're all part of a collective consciousness, but that collective consciousness died in 2012, and we are kind of in that little after period. Like when you die, according to doctors and medical people, when you die, your, your heart stays alive or your brain stays alive for seven minutes after death. And you're in that kind of a dream state. But in that seven minutes, I mean, that's seven minutes. That would be seven minutes to a doctor observing the event. But for you in that dream state, that could be, it could seem like years. There's a theory that we all died in 2012 and we're currently in that dream state and we're in a type of purgatory figuring out what type of reality we want to manifest because it's all a collective consciousness. Interesting theory. Would explain the Mandela effect. It would explain why so much has seemed kind of strange in the last 10 years. Interesting concept. I mean, like I said, I don't know that there's any validity to it, but it's certainly an interesting concept. It would explain so many things if, if we were sort of suddenly in some sort of a parallel universe or in some sort of purgatory or in some sort of in-between world that was a virtual world that seemed real and perhaps there's a cleansing taking place within that space and they're getting rid of all of the defective bits of consciousness hey take them off you go go into the mainframe stay trapped there you can't prevent the new world order the new world order is already here we're in it they're just consolidating it now the trick is to be able to predict their plans and show people where they're going which is what thwarts their plans because when you can predict it people just laugh at it and don't go along with it and that's one of the best tools we've got against them folks is to laugh at them humour the hate being laughed at. If it's just going to be this system imploding, all this system consolidating its foul, then the best thing you can do is to get yourself through to the other side, intact. And like I said, you've got to remove emotional attachment for what you're going to witness over the next 12 months to two years. And the best thing people can do now is get themselves through to the other side, folks. Like I said, I think we're going to be in some sort of a golden age at the end of this but we've got some severe ugliness to get through before that happens and like I said you've got to remove emotional attachment to all of this folks no stake in the outcome like I've often said if you throw yourself to the wind you can ride it well yeah sometimes you do you've got to let go of all of that sort of stuff you can't have emotional attachment to to other things or even other people they're on their own journey i mean sure you'll have emotional attachment to people but if they're going to choose to do something which is different to what you would choose 
Well, you've just got to be okay with that and have no emotional attachment to the outcome of that. And, and being able to leave and just, just do whatever comes next. I've always had this saying, if you throw yourself to the wind, you can ride it. And some of the stuff that I've done in my life, like um, when I, I went overseas in, in 2012, I went to an ayahuasca retreat in Peru for 10 days. And I ended up going right around the world. I was away for three and a half months. And I went to so many different countries, I ended up in Gaza Strip, uh, all sorts of places and got back home with exactly the same amount of money in my wallet as when I left, which was really crazy. And people say to me, how do, how do you do all the things that you do if you just throw yourself to the wind and, and ride it? How does all this stuff happen? You end up in all these, with these weird places. I mean, how do you do it if you don't like plan to go there? And I, I've always said, well, if I'd, if I'd had plans, if I'd planned my journey, I never would have done all those things because I would have had other plans and I would have missed on it, out on all of these opportunities along the way that just present themselves. You know, when an opportunity comes, these things happen to you generally once in your lifetime. A little opportunity comes, you think, oh, I'll do that next time. And then five, ten years later, you're thinking, I wonder when that next time's going to be, you know. These things happen once. And when you, when you take these little gifts that are given to you you can find yourself in the most incredible places doing the most incredible things that you never planned and you never would have planned you know you've got to see even going on a journey going embarking on any project at all as soon as you start that project whether it's a, an art piece you're creating or, or a musical piece you're creating or a journey that you're going on anything you're doing as soon as you start creating it, it, it becomes a life force of its own. And if you listen to it, it will speak to you and it wants to be alive and you can let it live and it will lead you places that you never expected to go if you can be open to the, to the fact of what life is and what energy is. And everything has its own life. If you know, things that we, A project that you create has its life because of the life you put in it. It's like a house. I mean, I look at a house. A house is, is dead. It's dead earth. It's stuff that we pulled from the living earth. We killed it and we built it into something that we think is alive, but it only has life when we actually go into it and we give it life. It's like any object we create from the earth. These are just dead objects that only have life when we give it to them. It's the same as any project you embark on. And what is a project? Well, a project is anything that happens when you get up and open your eyes and walk out the door. Anything you're doing, this is a, a project that you're embarking upon and it has its own life so listen to it listen to it there's this communication going on all the time but we're not listening most people simply aren't listening to the field they're not listening to their intuition you know which is the field talking to them all the time i've said to people so often you know your heart is an electromagnetic instrument it's a power source that sends energy to your brain your brain is a quantum instrument that, that turns possibility into actuality depending on the emotional input it receives from your heart and you create the world that you live in via that emotional input that emotional state which is why the, the power elite try to keep us in fear all the time why when we see all this bad stuff happening we don't see it as opportunity it's opportunity it's opportunity the system's breaking down this is great this is great stuff i mean sure it's going to be ugly but it, it has to be ugly i mean look at the state of the world it has to be ugly so you know there's different ways of looking at life and different ways of looking at what life is and I think that's that's where the secret is. That's where the golden nugget is. And when you understand that and you understand it's all about how you interact with the most, what you would perceive to be the most mundane of things, but they're not because every one of them is, is a life of its own. If you can just realize that, you can, you can change the way your life is. And if you throw yourself to the wind, you can ride it. You've just got to listen to what the wind is telling you.